YouTube. It's good to see you guys today. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to custom fit a uh, birdcage flash hider on an AR-15. Alright guys, the reason that I need to custom fit this muzzle device is because I want the the openings to line up with the top of my receiver so I want the bottom to point straight down that way when I'm in the prone position dust won't get kicked up every time I shoot and this way we'll have you know the flash hiding that we need and uh, in this case it even should give us a little bit of a compensation effect so this is in fact a birdcage flash hider we're going to get mostly out of this just flash hiding but since we're going to have the the bottom pointing down and the openings on top we might get a little bit of a compensator effect um, naturally when I thread it down on my crush washer it doesn't end up anywhere near see how it's sideways it ends up pointing sideways instead of up where my gas block is at so I'm going to show you guys how to custom fit that with a file if you can't you know if you can't just torque it down on the vise and whatnot you know there's only so much torquing you can do you know after that you're just gonna to have to go ahead and file it down go ahead and file down the washer and you know do so trial and error just a little bit of filing go ahead and check see how it fits and you'll get that custom fit that you want with you know exactly exactly the right way so I'm gonna go ahead and get started and show you guys how to custom fit a muzzle device what you're gonna need are some long flat files it's good to have more than one because sometimes you flatten out what you're working on to the point that you need a, a different kind of groove in order to keep cutting so for now I just got one out I'll pull out more as needed You don't have to press hard or anything, you gotta let the teeth do the work. So don't bother pressing or anything. Eventually, you're gonna have to wash out the grooves, because they're gonna be overloaded with metal. Eventually, you're gonna have to do that before you continue. check see where we're at if it doesn't fit the way I want I'll have to continue if it's not perfect but it's almost there you may just want to torque it down and you might get to where you want but if you're way off you just got to continue filing Yeah, even with a wrench, there's no amount of torque that's going to make that right. So I got to keep going. But you do want to check relatively often because a little bit goes a long way, believe it or not. Careful with your fingers. Easy does it. Pressing hard isn't going to do anything. You want the teeth to do the cutting. I mean, you might want to apply a you know, you apply some pressure, a tiny bit, just the weight of your hand, pretty much, and you let the uh, the teeth do the cutting. Be surprised how fast you make headway. Sometimes you got to rotate the work a little bit to 
get an even an even cut. As you do this, you can feel the teeth start to get full of metal. And eventually you'll see that you're going to have to wash it out, wash the, the metal shavings out, so that you can either put it away or continue if you still have to. Depending on what you got going on, you might want to work straight on the muzzle device. But since this one came with a crush washer, I'm going to work on the crush washer. On AKs, people tend to not use a washer and just go ahead and work on the, the muzzle device the same way in order to get the right rotation that you want. Give it another chip, see how it's going. If I'm close, I might just torque it down real tight, which is fine. You can do that on a uh, on a muzzle device, but you know there's only so much you can possibly do. From what I understand, anything more than 80 foot-pounds, you know, you could damage something. Honestly, that's what I've heard, but you know, I don't know if I'd want to go anywhere near that kind of torque. I'm going to go ahead and get on it with a different type of file for a little bit. This one's a little bit more coarse, the other one was a little more fine. If anything, I might want to finish it with the fine one. This one's not very wide, so I have to rotate it more often to make sure I get an even cut. Give it a check. Sometimes you get lucky and it, it's a real quick process. Other times it takes quite some time. It's just the luck of the draw. Hmm.
Alright guys, one last tip on getting your custom fit done. On AK-47s, that's a different animal. You can't do what I'm about to show you on those. Um, at least not to the same extent. I mean, I wouldn't do it at all. But um, on most rifles, like AR-15s, if you're really close to where you need to be, instead of risking cutting off too much and passing it, you can use your jig setup and either uh, go ahead and and put it in your vise if you have a good vise if you don't have a good vise you can uh, go ahead and put your upper receiver you know jig up your upper receiver and hold it down with one hand and torque it with the other till you get to your desired fit uh, you only want to do that if you're very close to where you need to be Uh, there's only so much torquing you can possibly do in order to to get your custom fit, but if you're you know if you're pretty darn close, go ahead and just give it a good squeeze, and uh, you'll make it just fine. All right, guys, here's the final result of my custom fitting. Came out absolutely perfect. see the bottom is on the bottom top is on the top now if we shoot prone we're not going to kick up dust all over our faces thanks a lot for watching guys I appreciate your company